once there was this dark, dark bottle. And in that dark, dark bottle was a dark, dark house. And in that dark, dark house was glue and wood and some paint. Hello, Randy Rain here, and this is about the buildings in a bottle. An idea that I came up with about 25 years ago. And I made a puzzle that was a house. After I made the little puzzle, I realized, you know what? I bet I could put that together inside of a bottle. And so I did. Here's the original one. This is the very first one I created. But then it became, how do I make one that actually is for the purpose of going into a bottle? So I designed it better. And this is what I've come up with. A lot of things have changed over the time. And this is my latest one. Haven't done one in a while. So I thought, hey, that's a good idea for a video. So let me show you how to put a building, and in this case, a little haunted house, inside of a bottle. So putting a little spooky house into a glass bottle. Well, it starts off with a couple of pieces of pine. I cut a strip down to three quarters by three quarters of an inch. Then I chop it up into the proper blocks. I need two long ones, and then it can be three shorter ones. The section for the roof. The long one on the bottom had to have a notch cut out of it. And the center one on the top is a little bit smaller than the other two that are on top. That allows me to put in the center upright piece here. And then I have to cut down the part that's going to be for the roof. So it needs to be cut on an angle. Once I have all the pieces that are going together, now they have to fit together. So again, start at the bottom. I put the two pieces together and I would drill out a hole and I would stick a wooden dowel in there for temporary and then drill out the other hole. And then you separate the two and you put a peg in one and leave the hole in the other and now you have this little peg system that where it pops together perfectly. Then the top three, you just do the same thing, but the pegs are going downwards into the bottom piece that you just put together. And so the center one only needs one peg. And so the two outer ones get two pegs and they get drilled out. So you do the same thing, just drill them all out and then fill it back up with a peg. And there you have it, it all goes together. And now I sand it down smooth so it's all flat and flush on every side. And then I go ahead and add in the roof. Same system, just drilling it out and putting pegs into it. And the center section here in the front for the door, it's gonna, it gets pegged and put in just like that. So then the roof gets sanded down, everything gets sanded down, and I have my perfect little shape of the house that I need. Each one of the cutouts that I made, even after the little peg, will go through the mouth of the bottle. So then it's just the detail. So I get a really thin piece of balsa wood and I cut me some little strips. This is my trimming for my house. And start off, go around the center piece, the edge all the way around. It's always gonna connect to one side and lap over to the other one, hiding the seam. So on this long piece, the piece of trim can go the entire distance here. But on the side pieces, it's then connected to the top. Same with the front. And that hides all the seam all the way around. And then there's the vertical seams. And you go in and do the exact same thing. So everywhere there's a vertical seam, a little piece of trim gets lapped over and hides it. When I used to make these, I would just literally carve out the windows. I would glue a piece of balsa wood onto the piece of wood, and then I would go in with a Dremel and a knife and carve out the windows. This time I'm opting for 3D printing. These little windows and these doors came out great. So I glue those into place at this time.
And now it comes the most tedious, the hardest, and the longest uh, the part of it all, and that's the shingles. You have to put every little shingle on there. And I do it exactly like you would really shingle a house, and a shingle would be tapered from one end to the other. Best way to do it is to glue a whole row all the way down. I just use CA glue and glue it all down. Then I come back with a craft knife and taper down the shingles. So on the side you do this little overlapping trick where you hide the seam inside the shingles. And then you keep doing this row after row and finally it's all done and you have a little house that breaks down into eight pieces. So next is painting, and I have found that you want to use enamel paint. So your typical little enamel model paints that you can get at the craft store work perfectly. Any water-based paint tends to warp the wood, and it doesn't go back together like you want it. So the enamel paint can go on there without messing up the wood. Plus it dries fast, and that's very randy friendly. For this one, I start off with just kind of a regular tannish brown. But I add in a bunch of iron oxide, which is just basically rust. It's a powder that I have. I mix that in. That, of course, changes the color of brown. But it also adds some grit into the whole thing. So as I paint it on, it's not just flat. It leaves behind a texture on the wood and especially on the 3D printed pieces so they no longer look like they're from a 3D printer. So I give it all a good base coat using this paint. For the shingles, I do everything flat black. That way it hides any imperfections there might be. And it gives me the base color of slate, which is what I want them to look like. Once I have both base coats down, I go back with a dark gray. And so I kind of just do a dry wash across the brown and kind of make it a little more grayer in spots. So then you have your typical brown colors, but you also have the graying of age. And then that same dark gray is now used dry brush on the black which starts to make it look like slate. Next, I'll take some black and I'll thin it down so it's very, very thin. So it's just still gonna be a wash. So all the gaps and the seams and the crevices and everything will be filled in with the thin down black to give it a more aged look. It'll even be done a little bit up in the shingle area. Then the last thing with the paint, I'm gonna use a little bit of a lighter gray and just hit some spots on the shingles to really make it pop so that it looks like a real roof. So I add a little nice detail touch to it. Then I mix up some a little epoxy and then I add epoxy into every one of the windows. You can leave it at this point, but eh, I don't really like it like this. I think the windows are a little too shiny, and I think there's still a little shininess from the enamel paint. So I'm going to hit it with some matte clear. That will give it the finished matte look to it, and it will also kill a little bit of the shininess on the windows. But at the same time, all the colors that are in the wood and the slates and everything are going to pop out more. And once that's done, it's time to put it in the bottle. So I want to do a signature, so I do my name backwards across the bottom in white enamel paint. And then I do my dot dash dot. That's Morse code for R in case you didn't know. And then I fill the bottom full of black plastic that I add in some small gravel rock. And then that's my foundation, so it's time to add the house to it. The tools that I use are just these two pieces of metal rod. They're quarter inch. One of them's bent, one of them's straight, one of them's a little bit longer than the other. And both of them have little pins sticking out the bottom of them. So the idea is you drop each piece in, add a little glue, and then use the tools to push them together. So you start with the two bottom pieces. They go in. You can turn it onto the side, mash it together. That one's real easy. 
put the middle one in. Shouldn't have done that. Should have put the sides in, left the middle for the last one. But anyway, I didn't do that, so I put the middle one in, and then as the side ones, I could get them in, but they keep wanting to fall over to the wrong direction that I want them to, and now my whole bottom piece is going to the wrong direction that I don't want it to. Finally, I figured out if I hold it this direction, upside down here and you push this way and it falls back into place where I want it to be and I finally get those little two pieces on there. So it's at this point that I want to start thinking about gluing the whole thing to the bottom foundation and to do that I'm going to need epoxy where I've just been using some clear Elmer's glue. So if I mix up some epoxy and then I'll just drop it down in here where the center section is going to go and so I try to put the center section in there and yeah it's not going in there and so I made the whole thing a little bit too big if I was to do this again I'd probably go with five eighths instead of three quarters on everything but anyway I can figure out how to get this in there so I take it real quick and I go grind down the center piece and was finally able to you know get it down in there and so it's in there, but I'm not ready to put it in place, but I gotta hurry up because the epoxy's going off. So, so I'll put the next section of roof in there. Um, this is the one that's supposed to go in there because then I've made the next one to go next. But I can't get the next one in there. Uh, no matter how I move it, I can't get this in there. Then I put the other roof section on, and then that allowed me to get the other roof section back on. But eventually I was able to get them both in their proper seating. And that allowed me to put the center section back on, and just in time for the epoxy to start curing down there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video because, hey, this is one of my secrets. I'm giving the world one of my secrets here. But I've had it for 25 years, so I guess that's long enough. There it is. That's how to put a building into a bottle. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a good like down below. If you want to see more like this, better hit that subscribe button, please. It helps the channel out. Now I want to thank these people right here. These people are patrons. If you want to become a patron, you can follow the link below to my Patreon account. There are some perks. Go check those out. Meanwhile, that's all I have for you this time. The Haunted House in a Bottle.